So hello everyone and thank you for joining today's session. My name is Jessica and I'm a counselor at Education Basket. Today we have organized this webinar in partnership with Domus Academy Milano. I'm joined by Paola Romano, the enrollment at uh, enrollment at admission specialist of uh, Domus Academy uh, in the MENA region. Paolo will be discussing personal branding tools or how students can best present themselves and their portfolios to obtain the best results. Um, there will be time allocated at the end of the session for a Q&A, so you can type any questions you have in the chat box for us to go over at the end. And this webinar is also being recorded and the recording will be available on our website in the next few days. Um, I'll just go ahead and give the floor to you, Paula, so we can go ahead and start the session. Great. Thank you, then. So thank you, Jessica, for the introduction. Yes, I am Paola Romano. I am Enrollment and Admission Specialist for uh, Domus Academy. Uh, I'm here today for, let's say, a special webinar. Um, so um, it is a webinar about personal branding. Uh, so I will give you tips and recommendations on how to present yourself at your best both for possibly an academy like ours, like Domus Academy, or for job positions, or any way for uh, different aspirations you may have. Um, so, great. Uh, I will have, let's say, 30 minutes more or less. It's not super long, uh, because I would like to leave some space to questions, to practical question, which is the best thing. Uh, so I will go through some info, but then if you have questions, feel free to ask them as well. So let's start. Uh, let's see if it goes. <laughs> okay, yes. So, so um, everyone, uh, let's start from the fact that everyone is different. First of all, as we all know, every, everyone has different aspiration, everyone has different desires, everyone has its own talents as well. Um, so uh, you just need to find a way to express your skills and what it is your uniqueness. So that's why the quote of today is everyone, it's legendary at something. Um, important is that to know how to uh, be able to communicate this. So I will give you some tips again and some uh, communication tips uh, to use in this process as well. Before uh, starting everything, um, a, a personal map could be a good starting point, could be necessary. Uh, so you need to understand who you are. Uh, we all have different backgrounds. We all have, some of us also have work experience apart from our educational background. So you need to make a list of what you do well and ask uh, yourself as well from these skills, what, what can I do? What can I improve as well? So you need, first of all, to be aware of your skills what I can do better than the others, what I can improve, what can I try to differentiate myself, um, what are my skills in terms of technical skills, but also in terms of soft skills, because yes, knowing how to use software, it's, it's very um, important, but also having soft skills is important. So group work, team building, diplomacy, organizational skills are as well important. So this is for the first slide. <laughs> Other uh, elements, uh, when you try to ask yourself, why are you different, um, is to possibly, you know, understand which kind of work environment and which kind of academies are you interested in. So maybe filling your maps with five designers you love. Um, in order to start creating links. And Domus Academy for this, it's, it's a great place to be. Um, we do have a lot of space, a lot of platform, big platform for our students to do networking. Uh, so you do meet quite a few designers during your path year as well. They are professionals, they are teachers, they are lecturers. So you have the possibility of making links as well. Then maybe uh, fill your map with five studios or companies that you really like to work, you would like to work with. Uh, that could be, you know, uh, for us, understand a way to understand who you are and which kind of values do you have, which kind of companies are you more similar to. Uh, 
And this can be useful for the last part of the master, which is the internship. So where the career service helps you find a place, you know, to work and to start working possibly. Um, then uh, another important part of your map is obviously the best skills and competences you have. Nowadays, when expressing yourself, there are two big com concepts which are super important. One is creativity and the other one is storytelling. Creativity, yes, it is a talent, but in a sense, uh, born from what is practice and experience. Um, in Domus Academy, in particular, with the practice and experience, we're quite well <laughs> experienced as well, uh, because we do have the workshops, the workshop, you work with companies, with brands, we try to help you kind of imagining something that doesn't exist yet, so also envision something for the future as well. The other and the second important concept here is storytelling. Storytelling is nowadays fundamental when applying for an academy or for a job in itself, because who sees your portfolio, your CV, your motivational letter needs to be engaged. Uh, you kind of um, create a relationship. In this case, it is a digital one. Uh, so you need to create your work and also be able to express it through a series of selected work uh, in order to create a good narrative of your projects. So this is storytelling, telling a story. It is a little bit of as well word making. So which is your word? Are you more a Wizard of Oz kind of person or are you more a Simpsons uh, kind of person? Uh, which kind of also visual reference are linked to your projects? Um, here, this is very interesting to attach another concept um, that is um, a very useful tip uh, when applying to everything. Create maybe a layout which is consistent in your CV and in your portfolio. This is helpful to telling the story both in your CV but also in your portfolio in terms also as well of visual aspect, obviously. Here I have a couple of rules which are always applicable, let's say applied, <laughs> um, and which are always useful. Uh, the first one is do not overput. So not put too much into what you're doing, what you're showing. Creativity, synthesis, simplicity, and personality is uh, what we like to say, uh, we like to see as well in a, in a candidacy. So in this case, the quote, less is more, it's, it's, it's perfect. You don't need to overdo to express a strong personality. Um, also in terms of visual elements as well. So uh, it's a quote that perfectly applies as well to what you're trying to show. But let's jump into uh, something practical um, and something definitely useful when applying to for a job or for an academy as well, the portfolio. Uh, the portfolio is probably the first thing the program leader or who's trying to hire you will look at. Um, so what is a portfolio? It is an archive of projects. It is a collection, a selection. First of all, the portfolio, it's a communication tool. So before start putting together a portfolio, you need to ask yourself and you need to define which is your communication goal. What are you trying to do? Are you trying to get in an academy? Or are you trying to find a job? Which is the person you are trying to deliver your message? That's also important. Then uh, students often ask me, yes, but which projects do I need to put? First of all, the right number of projects doesn't exist, but obviously not a lot. I would say around five, six, maximum seven projects in a portfolio. They should be your strong, strongest works, your most recent one possibly, so start from the latest to the newest ones, the ones that you love, because obviously when someone looks at your portfolio, the person will see where you were most passionate 
uh, about? Which project were you more passionate about? And as well, uh, you know, put in some pro projects that are more in line with what are the future aims you may have. Uh, um, for example, we have a lot of students applying for a master like interior design, but they come from a different background, a slightly different background. Let's say it could be architecture, it could be product design. In this case, obviously, we don't want to see only uh, projects of interior design. We know that's your background and that's great for us. But if you're applying for a different master, um, it's important to put projects of the master you are selecting as well, uh, because it's interesting and it's in more in line with what you want to do and what which is your future aim. Obviously, in order to uh, for the portfolio to be organized, uh, probably the most important thing is the index of contents. Every index, sorry, should have uh, the title, the field of the project, which could be space design, it could be packaging design, it could be strategy, it could be whatever. The company uh, where you did the where you did the project or the university in which you did the project that's also very important in the index. Uh, but let's go um, for the structure so to be a little bit more specific. First of all, the cover page. The cover page it's like meeting someone for the first time. So you meet them and I'm like, hi, hello, my name is Paula. So. <laughs> the main thing will be your presentation, the cover page. Um, second part, uh, the second module, let's say should have a short bio. It has to be professional, yes, but it has to be different from your CV. The CV, it's a little bit more technical. The bio should be a little bit more personal. There should be some statement, statements. I will show you some practical examples later. Third part after the bio should be the index. Uh, and the fourth part should be for each project to be able to put into a cover page with the title, with the short brief, so with the presentation of your project and possibly responding to the five Ws. So, who, when, what, why, and where. Let's say the where it's probably the least uh, used. Yes, it's super used in projects of design. So interior design and architecture, it's less used uh, as a question in other kind of portfolios, but who, because we need to know your role into the project. So it has to be specified. When, so possibly which year you did the project, uh, when, so if you did it again for a company or for a university or during university, what, so the concept, um, the why, so which kind of problem were you trying to solve or which kind of problem were you trying to set in the project and start from there. Every project I would say should have around three to four to five pages of project details. I wouldn't go further than that. Last but not least in your import in your sorry portfolio, it's the contacts and links. Do we do you have a Behance? Do you have LinkedIn? Do you have a YouTube channel? Uh, put it. That's interesting. Obviously, it has to be professional channels as well. <laughs> so uh, pay attention to your online presence. Uh, we don't want to see your Facebook where you, you put your personal photos and maybe some photos that we don't want to see. So let's stick it to professional photos anyway, or professional profiles anyway. Do you have... Uh, awards, publications, photos of competitions you have attended, why not? You can put it, if you can, put it in the portfolio. Then another important, let's say, concept for the development of the portfolio is the uh, design process. Sorry. It's the design process. So we don't only care for the final results. Um, in a sense that, for example, if you are doing a logo, so if you are a student of graphic design or, I don't know, business possibly, if you have to show a logo, I don't want to see only the last one. I want to see the one before, 
why, uh, sorry, uh, why it was redesigned, why you have decided to do a new one. I want to see the sketches. I want to see the whys and what you did prior the final one, because it helps me see your thinking. So your process of thinking that you did to arrive to the final logo, for example. If you're designing an interior space, obviously showing previous trials, it's not a, a good advice, <laughs> uh, but show all the process of the final projects you have done. Uh, so all the mood board, all the concept, all the technical drawings, the renders, everything. We want to see all the process, not only the final render. If we're talking about the field of business, if you want to create a new strategy or you want to launch your startup, you need to show the procedure taken into consideration, possibly step by steps. So again, just to reiterate the message, I don't want to see only the last. I don't want to see only the, let's say, result. I want to see the process because the process shows also your analysis and research skills which are super important in a project. Then uh, something I've said before, but again, I will reiterate the message when it comes to tips. Be uh, clear on which was your role, because especially university, you possibly do projects with more people involved. So we need to understand where did you take part into it, in the concept, in the research, in the rendering, let us know, that's important. Then um, the details. So if you have worked for an agency, for a company, put the name of it and also possibly the year. Another big thing I do, um, I do advise to students is to, cons to keep a consistent tone of voice and the aesthetic. So that's why before, I told you about the layout to possibly keep the same layout. Show your overall identity. This is everything, this is your presentation. So the portfolio has to be very showing and very telling of your identity as a designer. Um, again, keep a, give a little bit of more attention to your online presence or so possibly put professional profiles like LinkedIn or BNs or you no. Know, online portfolio, wherever you have it. Possibly not Instagram or not Facebook if they are not professional pages, okay? Um, then again, as I was saying before, if you have special projects or competitions, feel free to put them. Then let's pass to some real examples. So these are what you will see here, are real example of our past students of Domus Academy. Uh, these students, for example, created this very nice uh, cover page for portfolio. It's very clean, it's very neat, it's very tid tidy. You, you can see visibly uh, the name of the student, the portfolio, which field is the portfolio of, the years of the works inside the portfolio, and the fact that you can see that these are selected works. So not all of them, of the students. Here is an example of the About Me page. So the short bio page I was mentioning prior. This is an example of our, uh, one of our past visual brand design students. So you can see there is the picture, there are some important elements. So she states she's an illustrator and a brand designer. So that's her statement, this part. It's her statement, let's say visual band designer, illustrator, uh, packaging design, et cetera, et cetera. Then uh, she gives you an idea of uh, her skills and her educational background, as well as her work experience and the languages, other knowledges, other skills she has. Uh, you can see she has a very clear personality from the color, from the font, the picture, very nice, the milk bottles here to, uh, for the level of her skills. So it's super interesting to see, very particular anyway. Here is a, a very simple example of an index. 
uh, in this portfolio, we have four projects and every project has the preview. So the photo preview, uh, the title, uh, the uh, field and the number of page. So for example, this was a, a project with Coca-Cola, this is a brand campaign and the pages are from one to four. So a few pages, not a lot. Uh, Bonotto, marketing strategies, the pages, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a very clear example, clean as well, example of index. This is uh, an example of the cover page of a project. Uh, so uh, as you can see, there is on the right uh, a photo, a picture of the project. Uh, then you can see the title, the companies involved. In this case, it was a collaboration uh, between Kickstarter and Domus Academy. Uh, the year in which the project was done, uh, the brief as well, the short brief, the fact that it was a project, as you can see, uh, sorry, a group project, and the student well expressed the, the, his role uh, into the project the final product and obviously what it was trying to solve as a problem. This is another example of a cover page. So as you can see of a project, I mean, uh, this is uh, a collaboration, uh, no, sorry, a project for uh, Coca-Cola and McDonald's that we did quite a few years ago. So as you can see, there is the background graphic, the title, the brief with some words highlighted, uh, where, so Domus Academy, the year, and the field in the identity design workshop in this case. And then uh, the student has decided to put a, some hashtags, recap, hashtags of recap. As you can see as well, this was a team project. For privacy reasons, I've taken out the, the names of the students. You will see it's kind of, it's everywhere, <laughs> but uh, um, obviously you can see this was a group project. There were three people at least involved. The next slide here, this is the process of the previews uh, um, of this cover page. Uh, so this is the process with the research, with the problem setting and with the idea and the strategy. This is very important, the research and analysis part always, because it shows your critical thinking. And critical thinking today is very important. Last page of the same product, project, sorry, it's the final output. So in this case, the specific project was about creating a digital strategy, as both through social media and through app. Uh, so in this case, this specific group in four pages had solved the entire project. Um, so as you can see, not too many pages of details as well, but the process was well shown. Okay, that's for this portfolio. <laughs> Let's pass to the second important thing is the CV. The CV, it's Again, another important communication tool. It's more technical. The CV should include always the contact information. So your name, your surname, the address, the phone, and the email. Please be sure to check that what you put, it's real. So do not put a wrong email address. I've seen it before, so don't do it. <laughs> Obviously, if you need to be contacted, the email and the number needs to be correct. So double check it multiple times. Second part in the CV, quite important, is the educational background. So the university that you attended, the degree that you have earned, if you have won any grants, if you have had some academic awards and other honors that you have received, that's interesting for us. Other part of the CV is always the work experience. So if you have a lot of work experience, maybe only put the most relevant one. But if you obviously, if you're a student coming out of the university, you don't have a lot. So put your internships and what was your role during the internship and the months in which you have had that experience. Another important part as well is the skills part. So here it's your turn to put into technical skills. So we're talking about softwares and the level of the software that you know how to use. 
So basic, medium, up, advanced. Then graphically speaking, you can do a lot of things depending on what you're interested in, what you like, aesthetically speaking. But also put your soft skills. So the, the fact that you can work in teams, the diplomacy, etc. In a master like ours, for example, working in teams is very important. So if you don't have that, if you'd like to work alone, okay, but uh, you're missing something important here uh, for us anyway. Your CV has to be creative, but not chaotic. It has to be readable. And again, check and double check again that there are no mistakes, no misspellings, no anything which could you know, be uh, seen negatively. I have a couple of examples as well. So here are three of uh, resumes of our past three of our past students as you can see in all of them there are the main elements so the picture the name the address the number the statement here for the students here for the second one so visual artist visual storyteller and photographer and here a more extensive one for the last one um, second, in my opinion as well, it's uh, because this is also a statement, it's a little bit too long, but again, he's a storyteller, so understandable. <laughs> uh, then the work experience uh, and the part of the education. The part of the education in the third one, it's not presence. That's not okay. The educational background needs to be there possibly when it comes to work experience, educational experience, put from the latest to the oldest one. So as it's done here, so 2017 was the last one, then 2016, 2015, et cetera, et cetera, because it's a little bit more uh, useful for us to see. It. It's easier anyway to read it. Then obviously there are the technical skills, sorry, um, that every student has. For example, the third one has it here on the left. Um, the second one has it here on the, in the bottom part, the technical skills, that one has it in the middle of the page. Then obviously you can put other things like links, like uh, languages that you know, et cetera, et cetera. The second page, these are other three examples of CV. The first one, it's uh, one of our students of fashion design. This one was a student of luxury brand management. And the last one was the student of interior and living design. Let's start from the first one. The first one, it's a very good CV. Uh, she has lots of work experience. Uh, so she's a more skilled, let's say, designer as well. Uh, so there are a lot of technical elements. She shows she has a lot of work experience, but that's okay. It's easy, easily readable anyway, so that's okay. The second students, um, I think you can understand there are too many dots. Too many dots, too many lines. It's a little bit confusing because the dots bring my attention elsewhere. So I'm not trying to see the level here, I'm, I'm seeing the dots and, <laughs> and that's it. So too many bullet points, too many circles, please not Italian font, because that's not, we don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it personally. So I would avoid Italic font in a CV because it brings too, too much my attention in a certain places as well. The third student, so the last one, it's very clean, the portfolio, but he has no uh, information, uh, but he has a lot of info, sorry, he has a lot of, um, no, he has a lot of info on work experiences. I mean, uh, I would have put a little bit less of a description, like a little bit more two lines as the first one. So it's a bit too much, but anyway, it's nice. Uh, nothing to say about that. We're just speaking details on the last one. Last but not least in your presentation is the motivational letter. So the motivational letter, um, so if you want, obviously wanting to apply for Domus Academy, for example, the main question you need to ask yourself is why would you like to be part of Domus Academy? 
For the motivation letter, please remember one page is enough, uh, no more than that. Uh, it becomes too much. In the motivational letter, again, you're trying to telling a story. So you introduce yourself, you tell your story on your educational background, your work experience, uh, you explain why you think you could be a good student for Domus Academy and for a specific program in this case. Uh, the links that we have in, pro in um, sorry, in the comment. I have three, let's say, in terms of tips, so I can tell you that there, there, have, to, there have to be a three main paragraphs. So the introduction, where you talk about yourself and what you do, um, and what you, what you did in any way in the past. The body, where you kind of explain, uh, I studied this subject in university, I worked in this role, uh, um, I took my pas passion in design from, et cetera, et cetera. These are just examples. And the last part has to be the conclusion when you finalize it on why you are an interesting candidate for Domus Academy. Um, and that's it, that's, it. <laughs> that's the main thing. This is an example of a, in this case, this is not true, but it's a fake motivation letter, but very well done. Uh, so you put the contacts, you, she has put the contact details, so the address. Um, she has addressed the, the uh, another important thing is that you need to research uh, which is the program leader, so which is the person which is having the course and address it, the motivation letter directly to the person which is in charge of the course, which is very useful. Then obviously you have the body, so she explains a little bit more about herself. Uh, the achievement, uh, the story, etc., and the conclusion. So she kind of mentioned what she wants to do and thanks obviously the reader for um, going through her motivational letter. So just to recap, the motivational letter needs to be tailored to a specific program or to a specific position in case of a job. It has to be addressed to a specific person, possibly, if possible anyway. In this case, the program leader, if you're applying for a master in Domus Academy. Important in order to do all of this is to research before about all the requirements, about all the main topics of the institution and uh, trying to write in the motivation letter why and how and which one of these uh, topics are most interesting for you and wow and sorry and why you can contribute to them then last you need to demonstrate that you share the academy values and on this you need to be specific because we understand if you're not trying to be specific or if you're addressing a motivation letter to multiple institutions uh, so being specific, it's more appreciated. Um, academic values, well, uh, for example, if you're applying a program in Domus Academy, we are cross-disciplinary, we are multicultural school, we are a practical school, we do networking here. So if you share, obviously, the value of the academy, it's important to highlight those because it means that you have research and you know who we are and what we can do for you and what you can do for us as well, because you're not, we are not only, uh, you know, taking a student um, because it's applying, but we are taking a student because we believe in them. Uh, we believe they can be a good addition as well in the projects they can do, you know, they can present themselves to brands, to companies, to possibly start and work uh, as soon as possible after the master. So, again, this is what I was just stating before. Important, obviously, is also to express passion especially for master that maybe do not require a mandatory portfolio, having a very strong motivational letter uh, in which you express your passion, that's fundamental in order to pass and to be eligible for the master. So that's it for my presentation. I've taken half an hour more or less, so I've been very good. <laughs> so I don't know if there are questions or something that you want to ask, practically speaking, so I can, you know, help. Stop sharing in the meantime. 
Thank you, Paola, for the presentation. It was very detailed. Thank you. Um, I don't see any questions in the chat box, but everyone, please feel free to type any questions you might have. If it's general or something specific relating to your portfolio, that's totally fine. It's why we're here. So we're happy to answer anything. Yes, as well, if you uh, if there are some students that would like to, you know, present it personally, feel free to ask to Jessica, we can arrange it, no worries, I'm available for that. But let's say one to one as well, uh, if you have specific question on something you want to show. Yes, definitely. I think they're a little bit shy. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I understand that. Okay. We're clear, nice. <laughs> okay, great. Anyone else has any other comment or question for us while we're here? Maybe any of you are interested in Domus Academy and would like to know more about the institution. Yes, as well, if you have curiosities on the programs, you know. I'm okay to answer. Well, I think there are no questions anyways. <laughs> oh, we, we just got one. Uh, so do you offer scholarship? It really depends, not at the moment anyway. So we have uh, closed a few weeks ago uh, a competition, the official competition project-based uh, for September and November intake. So at the moment, we don't have anything open in terms of scholarships. Uh, we do uh, have, uh, usually uh, we do launch uh, competitions, uh, which they could be project-based or portfolio-based. Uh, so depending in, if they are um, scholarship, sorry, if they are project based, there is a brief to respect and a project to create specifically for the competition. If it is a portfolio based, obviously we ask to simply present your portfolio. <laughs> um, we also have another question about internships. Yes. Okay. So yes, absolutely. During the program, uh, the one-year master's we have, the internship, it's mandatory. Uh, it's a two-month internship in which uh, um, the career service, first of all, helps you find the internship. So we don't, uh, you don't need to find it for yourself. We have a very strong career service that activates internships all year long. And uh, um, so you have this two months of internship, which is mandatory. And then after the master, we don't offer scholarship after the master, but you, after the one year program, you would have acquired quite a few connections. Um, and we do have a platform open just for our students in which we uh, publish uh, job positions, internship, collaboration, competitions, whatever arrives from brands and companies anyways. So let's say the 91% of our students do work after one year of graduation. So the employment rate after the master is quite high. All right, thank you, Paula. Thank you. Uh, okay. I think we're just, uh, anyone has any last questions before we end the webinar? Just last chance. No, I don't think so. 
Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> okay. I think it was actually pretty clear. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Paula, for your time. Thank and you. And I just want to remind everyone uh, that uh, the session was recorded. So in case you missed anything or want to revisit it, you will be able to find it um, on our website starting yes. tomorrow. In case you have any questions, uh, more questions for Paula or would like to apply to Domus, what I'm going to do is just insert our contact details in the chat box here and uh, you can just get in touch with us uh, for anything else that you might need and we will arrange it for you okay uh, with that said uh, thank you everyone for attending and thank you again Paula for your time thank you thank you for for having me as well <laughs> thank you have bye. a nice day everyone bye thank you, bye